And then the instantaneous rate of change is at a moment or instant in time. Okay, so real quick down here at the bottom of the box, I'm going to draw a little function. Kind of wobbly. All right, so I'm going to have an x1 and an x2. I'm going to go up to the function and put a point. And we're going to connect those points. So if I'm finding the average rate of change from x1 to x2, I'm really just finding the slope. The slope of that line right there. So the slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. Now, average rate of change, you guys did back in Algebra 1. It was the first thing you learned about. When you learned about slope, you were learning about average rate of change. It's still the same thing. What was the slope formula? It's a fraction where you do some subtraction. Y'all remember? Good. Now, in calculus, most of the time, like on a multiple choice um, test, they wouldn't use y. They would use function notation. So it would be f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. So just to kind of get used to calculus notation, that's what it's going to look like. And that line, this line right here, that goes between two points on a graph. Do you guys know what that's called? I don't know when you learned that. But I think you may have heard the word before. That's a secant line. So it's the slope of the secant line between two points. All right, so let's talk about the difference in instantaneous rate of change. So let's say we have a point x1, right, and then we have a point over here. I'm not going to call it x2, though. But what I'm going to say is the distance between those two points is h. What would you call this second point? If this, if this first one here is x1, the distance between them is h. What is the second point, second x? It would be plus. Now what we want for instantaneous rate is for that h to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So those points would get closer and closer and closer together that eventually it's going to be grr, closer and closer and closer and closer. But eventually it's a line that just touches, just scrapes it at one point. Do you know what that kind of line is called? I thought you would have learned it. But it's, it's okay. It's a tangent line. So when you're looking for the instantaneous rate of change, you're looking for the slope with the tangent line. Okay. So we're going to go back up to that little dash, and we're going to do the change in y over the change in x. 
but we're going to use the point x sub 1 and x sub 1 plus h. So it's going to be f of x sub 1 plus h minus f of x over x sub 1 plus h minus x sub 1. And what we want is for that h value to get closer and closer and closer to zero till it's, it's gone and then you have a tangent line. Now, if you don't understand that right there, it's okay. We're going to talk about that idea for a while. I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek of it. Okay, let's get through some of these examples. We may skip some just to save on time. All right, so um, for this first problem, we have a table that gives the temperature in Denver, Colorado measured in Fahrenheit, where T is the hours after midnight. So we want to find the average rate of change for the temperature between 6 a.m. and 3 p.m. So for 6 a.m., what would the time be? Or what would T be, I should say? How many hours since midnight is that? Six. Six. All right. What about 3 p.m.? Thank you. All right. So I'm going to write it using calculus symbols. So I'm going to find D of 15 minus D of 6 in the numerator. And the denominator is just going to be 15 minus 6. So looking at your table, what is D of 15? Seventy one. And then D is six sixty eight. Fifteen minus six is nine. So it's like we end up with four ninths. Now one kind of big idea in calculus is paying attention to your units. So this is a an average rate of change. Think about what we subtracted on the top and what we subtracted on the bottom. What do you think these units will be? Like, what is four ninths? Four ninths what? What did we subtract on the top? Right, so degrees Fahrenheit per hour. So that's how fast... Um, or that's the average rate of change, how fast the temperature is changing between those times. Four ninths of a degree Fahrenheit per hour. Okay, we're going to skip number two and go to number three. So we're going to estimate the instantaneous rate of change um, in temperature at 9 a.m. So we know the temperature at 9 a.m., but we don't know the instantaneous rate of change. And we can't know it, but what we can do is estimate it. So to estimate it, I can find the average rate of change around 9. So I could use 7 and 11. I could use 7 and 9. I could use 9 and 11. Most of the time, people like to, to do one or the other. So let's just go ahead and do um, between 9 and 11. So we'll do D of 11 minus D of 9 over 11 minus 9. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. That'll work. All right, so D of 11 is 82. D of 9 is 77 over 2. So that's five degrees Fahrenheit per, five halves of a degree Fahrenheit per hour. That is not the only estimate. Like in last class, I did it, I did um, between seven and 11. We could have also done between nine and seven. They're, those are all estimates. The closer you get to nine, the better the estimate is, so. Okay, I'm going to 
excited to talk about number four tomorrow. And we're going to go on to the graphs. So this is a problem I made up last year about a virus, which is kind of funny. Um, I should have remade one up for the coronavirus, but that's okay. Um, so an influenza epidemic spreads through a population rapidly. The number of infected people is modeled by the function F, where F of T gives the number of people infected, and T gives the number of days since the outbreak. So what I want you guys to do is draw the line tangent to F at 16. So 16 days, I'm going to go up to the graph. I'll say that's about right here. And when you draw a little tangent line, just draw it so it just scrapes the surface. Now I want you guys to make a note that the slope of the graph at a point gives the instantaneous rate of change. Now sometimes your graph is a straight line and it's easy to find the slope. Sometimes your graph is curvy like this one, so then you just draw a little tangent line and you can estimate it. Okay, let's look at number or letter B. Which of the following gives the best estimate for the instantaneous rate of change of F at T equals 16? So F of 16, is that a rate of change? F of 16. F of 16 tells you how many people have the virus on the 16th day. So this is not even a rate of change, so that's definitely not a good example. So the other three are the slope of the line between 0, 0 and 16, 16. The slope of the line between um, 14 F of 14 and 18 F of 18 and then the same thing. So those are all slopes. Those are all average rate of change. Those are all rates of change. So looking at those points, which one do you think is the best to estimate the instantaneous rate of change? A or B, C or D? Why? You're right. Very, very good. You're getting closer and closer and closer to 16, and they're really close to each other. So that's the best estimate. All of those are actual estimates because 16 is in, in there, um, but that's the best one. All right, and then sometimes you'll see the wording difference quotient, and it kind of confuses people, but difference quotient is just what we were doing earlier. This is a difference quotient. This is a difference quotient. So it's asking us to write a difference quotient. So if we wanted to use the points that we were going to use on part D, you would do F of 16.1 minus F of 15.9 over 16.1 minus 15.9. All right, we got one more to go, number six. So number six, you see a lot of particles in motion, particle moving along the x-axis a lot in calculus. Um, we'll come back to this many, many times. So you're not gonna be, you're not gonna fully understand all of this today, but we'll get there. Um, so a particle is moving on the x-axis. The position of the particle at time t is given by x of t whose graph is shown below. Use the graph to find or approximate the following. So the first one wants us to find x of 2. 
what is it? Like, how do you do that? What does that mean? We have the graph. We want to find x of 2. So it's asking you to find the value of the function when the time is 2. So what do you all think that is? 20, good. So that means that after 2 seconds, the um, particle is at the 20th unit on the x-axis. All right, what about b, x of 8? Yes. So after 8 seconds, the particle is at the 30th unit on the x-axis. All right, and then C asks us to do the exact same thing in a different way. So the position of the particle at time equals 20. What do y'all think? 60. So same thing. We just go to 20, find the value of the function. All right, D, E, and F are all asking to find speed. Is speed a rate of change? Is it? Yes, speed is a rate of change. So that means we're looking for slopes. So let's write that down. So the slope of position is velocity. Is this problem asking you for velocity? No, it's asking for speed. So what's the relationship between speed and velocity? Velocity right. So if we know the velocity and we want to find the speed, speed doesn't have direction. So we just do the absolute value. Okay, so let me erase my dots here. All right, we want to find the speed of the particle at t equals 6. So t equals 6 is right here. So what we want to do is find the slope of the line right there. Oh, that wasn't good. Let me just do a purple. <laughs> so what is the slope of that line? It's the rise over the run. Now, pay attention to the units. So to get from here to here, you go up how many? 10, and then over, I think it's six. Yeah. Or five thirds of a unit per <laughs> second. All right. And then 9 is right here. So what's the slope at 9? That's another thing to say, nothing. What is the constant? What's the slope? Zero. <laughs> so it just means during that time frame, the particle stands still. All right, and then 22 is right here. So we want to know the slope of the line right there. So it looks like we're going up 10 over 2. So 5 units per second. All right, any questions? 